Hey, it's Steve Lindsley. Welcome to my shop. I got a couple of videos. I'm going to show how I'm going to uh, make this tall vase. It's about 20 inches tall. Uh, the main wood is Jatoba. Uh, it's got curly maple uh, featuring there with some blood wood and a little um, walnut at the top of it. So I saw the piece, uh, uh, inspiration for the piece came from a uh, uh, trip to Lakeland, Florida. I was staying at a hotel and they have some decorations in the lobby or whatever and one of them was a, a ceramic vase that was uh, about this size, maybe a little bit shorter, but about about the same size, same general shape. So I got a picture of that in the, uh, the this first video so you can you can see whether uh, you can see where I got my inspiration and judge whether I actually got it close or not. <laughs> close or not. So so in this first video, I'm going to show you how I laid out this segmented turning, uh, how I cut the segments, glued the rings together. Uh, and the video stops about um, right before I get ready to put the pieces on the lathe. So if you want to see how I turned it on the lathe, you need to jump over to the second video on this, which is uh, uh, putting, the, putting the piece on the lathe and, and um, actually turning it to shape and whatever. And I also show uh, how I put this uh, rope on the, on the piece. So. So stay tuned and I'll show you how I laid out and cut the segments for this segmented piece. Okay, here's the original that I saw at the uh, hotel in Lakeland. Um, it said it was a ceramic piece. Uh, I, I put my coffee cup next to it so I could get an idea of the height of the piece when I get ready to draw it up. So figuring a coffee cup was about three inches or three and a half inches tall. So I use that as a reference to uh, blow this blow this picture up and actually make a drawing. It's probably a little difficult to see but this is the drawing I made from the picture I showed a minute ago. Uh, from this drawing then I went ahead and used it to lay out the segment so we'll go ahead and uh, work on that next. I've taken my drawing and I've uh, erased the other lines that I had on here and I've laid out the uh, rings on the uh, on the piece. I uh, probably can't see them too well at the moment, but I'll zoom in here in a second. Um, so I laid them out, and then I drew some, uh, made some columns and some uh, for some information over here on the right hand side. Let me see if I can maybe zoom in a little bit and we can look at the, the feature ring. Um, let's see. So the, the this is going to be the feature ring. It's going to be two and a half inches tall. Um, so what I did was on this side, I've laid this out. This first column is the ring number, or in this case, I just labeled it feature ring. Uh, the second column is the diameter. So it's from the center line out to the outside of the piece. In this case, it's seven inches. Uh, well, this would be the radius. You gotta, I've made that mistake in the past, too. This is, this is the radius, so you've got to double it to get the diameter. Uh, there's going to be 16 segments in each ring. Each ring length or segment um, needs to be 1.37 inches. Uh, the thickness needs to be, which is this way in this piece, needs to be 0.96, uh, two and a half inches tall. The, di the um, angle is 11 and a quarter, and the piece is 26 inches long that I need, or the board is. And I'm going to use tiger or curly maple for the for the piece. So. Um, I found from experience that it's, it's best to cut the, do the feature ring first, and then that way once you get the uh, diameter feature ring, because these, you know, if I got it exactly that, then it would probably come out right. But it's better to do the feature ring first, measure the diameter, and then um, reset the center line, either move it in or out, uh, based on the uh, the finished finished uh, feature ring. And then that way I can go ahead and calculate the segment uh, length and all the rest of the information that I need. So that's the, the drawing. I, I need to do some additional work on it down here. I'm, I'm going to put a floating disc down here on this piece, so I need to draw that in. And I'm thinking about putting uh, some sort of accent wood between the, on either end of the, uh, the feature ring. So since I've already drawn this out, I'm not going to like erase it and start over again. What I'll do is I'll just make an old sketch here in the middle with what I want to do, and the piece will wind up maybe being a half an inch taller than it was before. The majority of this piece is going to be, uh, this wood is called Jatoba. Uh, I think it's also known as Brazilian cherry. 
Uh, my local hardwood suppliers that I normally go to didn't have any of this uh, particular species. So I went about an hour north of where I live to a, to a, a place called West Penn Hardwoods. Uh, I'll put their... Uh, I'll put their website in the uh, comments. Uh, they could, they had more wood there than you could shake a stick at, and yes, pun pun intended. <laughs> it was, uh, anyway, they had a, a nice selection of jatobas, so I picked me out some nice pieces. Um, I'm also going to use, like I said in the uh, previous video, I want to use uh, curly or tiger maple for the feature rings, so I got a board of that. Um, I actually got more than I need, uh, but I always like to have it on hand because I like to use it for different things. So uh, you can't really see too much here. I did put um, I did put some uh, mineral spirits on this side. Let me see if I can zoom in a little bit. Um, you can see that this piece has got some, uh, if I stop bumping the camera around, you'll see that it's got some, quite a bit of curl in it. So um, it's a nice looking board. It was, uh, um, it's going to look real nice. So uh, this piece only needs to be, um, two, I need a piece two and a half inches wide, so I'm going to take it off this side where all the curl is. Uh, actually, the feature ring, the way I'm going to do it is actually needs to be cut um, standing on its, it'll be standing on its edge when I'm, when I'm done with it to make it two and a half inches tall. So because I'm doing it that way, I can't use the wedgie sled. So I'm going to, I made another sled to, to cut this piece with. So I'm going to go ahead and mill up this piece to, two and a half inches. Uh, it's longer than I need. This will be an extra piece in case I need it. So um, I go ahead and mill that up and then uh, start cutting the segments to the length and then we'll cut an angle on them. So let me get set up and we'll do all that. Okay, I'm going to have to apologize here. This is a reenactment of cutting these. <laughs> I know I filmed the, uh, the actual cutting, the actual feature ring, but I don't know. I changed phones during this uh, project and I think uh, the uh, clip didn't get taken off my phone and put on the computer. So anyway, it's pretty much the same thing. Uh, it's the, the sled I'm using is just a couple of pieces of MDF screwed together with a stop uh, and then a, a hold down piece to hold a, a pieces where I want. Uh, the blade is at 11 and a quarter degrees and that's really the key thing for cutting a segments this way is making sure that the blade exactly at the angle that you need it to be. Uh, so what I do is cut the angle on the one side on all the pieces and then go back and uh, turn them around and cut the angle on the other side. Now, I, on the originals, I had drawn uh, a line where I needed it to be for the segment uh, width. So I just kind of snuck up on it until I got it to where I wanted it. And once I got the first one cut to the, uh, the proper width, then that was easy enough projects to cut all the rest of them. So... Sorry about losing the clip there, but you can kind of get the idea. Don't pay any attention to the orientation of the wood here. Normally you would be cutting on the end grain. Uh, these were just a couple of pieces of scraps that I had dug out to show uh, for this video. All right, I got the uh, feature ring uh, dry fit. Um, it's got nice tight joints all around. Um, it's two and a half inch, just a little over two and a half inches tall because I'm going to run through the drum sander and clean these up. Um, so that, that worked out pretty well, actually. Um, let's see, the diameter of the piece from flat spot to flat spot turned out to be seven and a half inches. I was shooting for seven, but I actually um, cut the parts a little bit wider. So instead of the, uh, let me uh, change some of this here so we're not totally blinded. Um, so instead of the actual, the, the 137, um, I actually cut them at like 140, 145 or something. So that, that little extra width gave me a wider ring. So what I'll do is I'll make this seven and a half. I'll move this center line over a quarter of an inch because it's, um, this is a radius. So I want half of what the diameter is. So. I'll move it over a quarter of an inch and that'll make the outside of this wall here to seven and a half inches so which is what our feature ring turned out to be so then once i have that that one done um i can go ahead and calculate all the rest of these what i do is i just i measure out uh, the outside edge um, and fill it in for the diameter uh, and for the segments it's segment length is uh, 
diameter times pi will give you the circumference divided by the number of segments, and that gives you the segment length for each, each piece. So, um, so that worked out pretty well. I'll glue up the piece. Um, to set the angle, and I should have showed this earlier, to set the angle on my uh, saw, I use this uh, Beal, whoops, sorry. I use this uh, Beal tilt box uh, little gauge here. At, um, I use it for setting the angle on my uh, saw. Wixie makes one as well. This just happens to be a, a Beal. So they're, they're pretty accurate if you take the time to, to uh, make sure that you get it to where you want it to be. So, all right, so there we go. We got the, uh, the feature ring uh, finished up. And I'm going to glue it together and then do the calculation for the rest, and we'll start cutting the rest of the segments. Uh, then we can go back to the wedgie sled, which makes life a lot easier in cutting these uh, segments. So stay tuned. I finished up the drawing here based on our um, size of the feature ring. So let me show you a couple of things I've added to it. Um, Hopefully you can see. I'm going I'm to do a floating disc down here on the on the bottom. So I've added a maple disc there, and to to put a keeper ring on there, I added a quarter inch. Um, I'm going to make this bottom piece a half inch. I'll make this a quarter inch. And I'm going to use an accent wood. I'm going to use a mesquite for that. Um, give it a little little extra color there. So uh, and what I am going to do is I'm going to put a mesquite. If you can still see this thing here, uh, let me see. I'm going to put a um, mesquite quarter inch uh, ring on either side of the... Uh... Well, actually, no, I'm not going to use mesquite. Uh, the pieces of the mesquite I had were almost the same color as the uh, Jatobas, so they really didn't... After I put that first one down at the bottom, I really didn't like the way that they, uh, that they looked. So what I did was on either side of the uh, feature ring, I put a couple of pieces, a couple of rings of bloodwood, uh, and then up at the very top, I put a, um, a little ring of walnut. So uh, please ignore my comments about the mesquite rings. So it's uh, turned out better in the end with the bloodwood and the walnut. The feature ring. Um, I didn't want to redo the whole drawing, so I just made a little note here to myself that um, this is the feature ring. The feature ring is still going to be two and a half inches tall and a quarter of an inch on each side which will make the whole thing a half inch taller, but that's fine. Uh, so I'm going to do that, and then also up at the top, if I can get it into the picture here. Let me see if I can move this up a little bit. Up at the top piece, I'm going to add a, um, the very top ring is going to be a, a mesquite ring. Um, so the Jatoba is kind of a medium brown color, maybe a little darker, and then I got some mesquite that's kind of a darker brown. So it kind of gives the whole thing a little bit of an accent, so I think I'll do that. One other thing I mentioned is I'm going to wrap some rope, or not rope, I called it rope on the plan, but it's more of a, a twiny kind of stuff. I am gonna. I plan on wrapping some around this center section here to, to kind of imitate what was on the original. I don't, I don't know how that's going to work out, but... Anyway, so I got all my uh, segment uh, links in there. Um, however they came out, I mean, I got this one up here at the top is 0.99 inches. Am I going to make that an inch? Absolutely, I'm going to make it an inch. And some of these that are close to something easier to measure, but I, I just, however they came off the calculator, that's how I left them. Um, so we'll, we'll see. So I'm going to start at the bottom here um, and make the bottom rings and then kind of work up from there. So let's get started finally. Part of the, a lot of the uh, thing on these segmented pieces is a planning part. So now that I got that done, got all the measurements I need, I'm going to go ahead and start cutting the pieces. Finally, it's time to cut the rings. Uh, I got the wedgies let out. I got it set to cut uh, 16 segments. So I, first thing I do is cut a angle on the first piece and then it's just a matter of uh, doing it same thing <laughs> flipping back and forth 16 times until you get the uh, number of pieces that you need. Um, I have another video on on making and using the wedgie sled so please check on my channel and you can get more information on that. Uh, it's a sled that was invented by a guy named Jerry Bennett and it, and it, it really makes cutting these uh, segments uh, 
foolproof. You get pretty much a, a perfect ring every time. So check that out if you get a chance. Well, once we cut all the pieces, we've got to glue them together. So I'm just using a Type Bond 3 or Ultimate, I guess they call it now. Uh, I generally do a dry fit just mainly to get the clamp set to the right, uh, right diameter, the right combination of clamps, depending on the size of the ring. Uh, and then it's just a matter of putting some glue on them and putting them back in the clamp and letting them dry. So uh, it's, uh, if you've seen the glue up or cutting the rings one on, or cutting the segments on one ring and gluing them up, uh, you've pretty much seen them all. So uh, in this piece, it was just a matter of rinsing and repeat that. Uh, 23 times. And here's all the rings uh, cut and glued together and just kind of stacked up there, waiting, ready to go on the lathe. Okay, that's how I laid out this segmented turning and, and uh, cut the rings and glued them together and uh, have them all stacked up, ready to go on the lathe. So if you're ready to uh, see that part, go ahead and uh, switch over to the second video. I thank you for watching this one. And if you haven't already, please go ahead and click that subscribe button.